We're now going to consider how to calculate the moment of inertia of slightly more complicated shapes. So we're going to be considering a disc and a ring. Now this may be a bit scary at first and complicated but really is just applying the same technique as what we used to the rod. What we're going to be doing is breaking these shapes up into small parts and we'll cons be considering the part of the shape which is all the same distance from the pivot point working out how the part at a certain distance contributes to the moment of inertia and then summing up all these contributions to come to the moment of inertia for the entire shape. So we're going to start by considering a disc. The disc we're considering has a total mass capital M, a radius capital R and a height H. So we're going to be calculating the moment of inertia I, which we've seen before is equal to R squared dm. And so with our disc, we're going to break it up into little rings. So let's consider a little ring like this. And our little ring has a width here, dr and it's located the distance r from the pivot point from the center of the disc about which the disc is spinning. So in order to substitute into this equation here to work out how this little ring contributes, we need to know the mass of the little ring. So dm is equal to mass of little ring and that'll be equal to the density of the disc, which we're assuming is uniform. So assume uniform density times the volume of our little ring. So let's work out now what the density is and what the volume of this little ring is. So let's start with the density first. So the density for the disc is equal to the mass of the disc divided by the volume of the disc. Now we're told that the mass of the disc is capital M, so we've got that. And now we just need to work out the volume of the disc. So this disc has a surface area pi r squared because that's the surface area of a circle and then to get its volume we just times it by the height of the disc which is h. So the density of the disc is given by m over pi r squared h. Okay now what we need to do is calculate the volume of just this little ring here. So dv, let's imagine if we can taking this little disc, uh, this little disc here and spreading it out. So it is a rectangle when we spread it out. It's got a width dr along here. So that's this width here. We've just uncurled it. It's got a length here equal to the circumference of the circle. So this length here is 2 pi r and it's got the same height as our disc, so it's got height h. So hopefully from considering it this way, you can see that the volume is going to be given by 2 pi r h times dr. So now that we've got the volume and the density, we can work out dm. So dm is just multiplying these two things together. So we've got the density, which is capital M over pi r squared h, and then times the volume of our little ring. So 2 pi r h dr. Now some things will cancel out. We can cancel out our pi. We can cancel out our h. These r's are different r's. So this r here shows the distance of our little ring from the pivot point, the center of the disc. This capital R, that's the total radius of the disc. So this is equal to 2m r dr over r squared. So now that we've got dm in terms of r, we can substitute it into our equation up here 
for the moment of inertia of a disk. So we've got the total moment of inertia. Now we will want to sum up our little rings right from the center with radius zero to the outer radius, which is capital R. And then we've still got the R squared. This R squared is this R squared at the start times dm, which is 2m r dr over r squared. Now let's pull the constant terms out the front. So out the front we've got our 2m on r squared. This is capital R, so it's not a variable, it's the total radius. And then we're integrating from 0 to r, and we've got little r squared times little r, so that's r cubed dr. So doing this integration, we've got the 2m on r squared, and then when we integrate r cubed, we end up with r to the 4 on 4. And this is from 0 to capital R. So now we can substitute this in. And we've got 2m on r squared times r to the 4 on 4. When we substitute in the 0, we just get 0. So when we subtract that off, it doesn't change it. Okay, so let's just simplify this a bit. We've got an r squared here, so we can cancel that with two of the r's here. So we've got an r squared here. We've got a 2 here, which will cancel with this 4 to leave 2. So this is equal to m r squared on 2, or a half m r squared. And we've now derived the moment of inertia of a disk. Okay, now a slightly more complicated shape, but very similar, is a ring. So let's consider a ring like this. So our ring has an internal radius given by R1 and an external radius given by R2. Now some of the steps here are going to be the same and some are going to be a little bit different. So once again, we'll be using this formula up the top to calculate the moment of inertia. We'll need to calculate the mass of a little ring. So let's change colors and we'll consider a little ring here. Once again, we're considering a little ring with a width dr. So that width in there is dr, and it's found at a radius r from the center of the disk. So this diagram still corresponds to what would happen if we took this little strip here and stretched it out. The density is going to be a little bit different. So let's draw a line here to separate us. Our density, once again, is equal to the mass over the volume. But here we've still got, we're assuming that our ring has a mass, capital M still, but the volume is a little bit different. So the mass is still M, but the volume is given by pi r2 squared minus r1 squared times h. So it's still got our height h here. The reason being is it's the big disk and then we're subtracting off the little disk in the middle. So that's effectively what we're doing with this minus r1 squared term in here. So this is our new expression for the density. So the volume of the little ring, which we're considering here with width dr and length r, we've said doesn't change. So we've still got our dv is equal to 2 pi r h dr. But now our dm, which is equal to the density times the volume, is given by m over pi r2 squared minus r1 squared h times 2 pi r h dr. These pi's cancel, these h's cancel, and we're left with, so this is equal to 2m r dr over r2 squared minus r1 squared. So a very similar expression to what we had up here, but now we've got r2 squared minus r1 squared on the bottom instead of just r squared to account for that different total volume which affected our density a little. Okay, so the moment of inertia. So 
in this case the limits on our integral we are only going to sum our little rings between the radiuses r1 and the radius r2 as in the middle here there is nothing so we're going from r1 to r2 and it's r squared times dm which is 2m r dr over r2 squared minus r1 squared so pulling the constants out the front we've got 2m over r2 squared minus r1 squared and then we're doing the integral from r1 to r2 of r cubed dr okay we're going to integrate now so we've got 2m over r2 squared minus r1 squared and then this is times r to the 4 on 4 from r1 to r2 so this is equal to 2m over r2 squared minus r1 squared times i'm going to put this one on four here and then we've got times r2 to the four minus r1 to the four now this four will cancel with this two and we'll end up with a two on the bottom now the kind of fun thing that we can do at this point is look at this term and this is actually the difference of two squares. So we can actually write this as r2 squared minus r1 squared times r2 squared plus r1 squared. And maybe you're seeing why I'm doing that because here we've got an r2 squared minus r1 squared. So part of this is going to cancel. So I will cancel this out with that. And that leaves me with, I've got m on the top and I've still got a factor of r2 squared plus r1 squared on the top. And then on the bottom, I've got two. So I can write this as a half m r2 squared plus r1 squared. Now it may at first seem slightly surprising to you the format of this expression because we've got r2 squared plus r1 squared when to get the volume we were subtracting them from each other but when you think about it the moment of inertia should be larger if more of the mass is concentrated towards the outside and by moving some of the mass of our disk further out by creating a ring with the same mass then we would expect the moment of inertia to be larger so it does make sense that these are summed and not actually subtracted from each other in the final expression.